So here we are on a blustery May day in the run-up to the all-important T2 and we're just about to go round the country to look at crops from the south to the north and see what the disease risk is in the run-up to the all-important T2 timing. Septoria is probably one of the most challenging diseases to control. How does the disease infect? I mean, obviously it arrives early autumn and it's overwintering there in the crop. Mm -hmm. This lower leaf here has very visible symptoms, which most people would recognise readily. You've got some early lesions there without the pycnidia, the, the sporing bodies. Mm -hmm. And then here you've got the more mature lesions with nice visible black dots. Now within those there are thousands of spores, so we've already had a rain shower here this morning which will have splashed spores onto you know, your upper leaves here. Mm -hmm. But as well as that you've got the wind you know, rubbing the crop, the crops are fairly short so those leaves are all rubbing so there's direct transfer into those leaves. Mm -hmm. So these leaves will already be infected and it's running on a thermal clock so the septoria is developing within those leaves. We're thinking about ear blight management now yeah. and I can see you're picking up potentially inoculum on the trash in the fields. This is rape trash, obviously rape trash from last year. There's two types of fusarium. Yep. There's, uh, there's fusarium graminearum, which is the one that we, we see in here with the parathesia, and fusarium colmorum, which doesn't produce these parathesia, it just produces spores on, on the trash, which you don't really see. Okay. They, they normally mature around the end of May, beginning of June, mm -hmm. as the crops are starting to flower. And then the type of symptom that those two species produce is very similar, so you can't really distinguish it apart. And, and basically it will be bleaching of the ear above the point where they infect. Okay. picked out a few plants and uh, what we've seen at the stem base is the typical browning that you get from microdocium. So basically what it's meant is that the free draining soils have meant that the microdocium has, has been able to establish over the winter. Okay. If you had a heavier soil where there's standing water then, yeah. then you're less likely to have got that okay. microdocium establishing. Okay. The symptom that you see from a microdocium would be bleaching of an individual spikelet and it doesn't spread across okay. the year. You can get more than one spikelet, but uh, okay. what you don't see is, certainly early on in the, the, in the ear development, is that the rachis goes bleached. Okay. Whereas with the true fuse area, from the point of infection, the whole of the year goes bleached. So bleached. one infection point takes out all the spikelets above oh. and all the carbohydrate transfer, which is why you get such big yield That's impacts. Right. We can see little bits of septoria and the base of the crop. What risk do you think that's going to pose in the run-up to T2? If you're looking at T2s now, mm -hmm. um, very important that you target the full flag leaf emerge, that you don't go that bit too early and leave the unemerged part of the leaf untargeted. If you get septoria in that bit of the leaf, it's even more damaging than if it's further up because it's then impeding of the leaf. Yeah. You assume that the leaf is infected as it's emerged, yeah. which it would be in splashy conditions. The clock's running from that point. Okay. But you have, you know, maybe five days in products to, to kick back. So you can afford to leave it a little. a lot of septoria it's really visible at this site heavy soil so that moisture's been obviously helping relatively early sown as well so when we walked up earlier and you saw the later drilled you know far less visible disease mm -hmm. still the potential though and again that story about the weather from now on in if it's unsettled as is predicted what are your recommendations for stewarding the product mixes we'll be using at the t2 timing i think the big thing is to look across the program so that you're trying to use a mix of chemistry right from the early spray timings right through so you're not just thinking about stewardship at the individual timing you're working a variety into the program okay as we've been looking around we can see again that there's there's lots and lots of black parathesia the the spore bearing structures of, of fusarium graminearum which is the the mycotoxin producing form of fusarium eoblite okay graminearum and, and any of the 
fusariums or microdociums, the main risk is at flowering. So as, as the crop is starting to flower about growth stage 61, mm -hmm. if we get wet, weather, humid, around that sort of time, then the, the ascospores or the macroconidia for Culmorum mm -hmm. will splash up to the ear and, and infect. picked up a few plants here we can see at the stem base we are getting the browning that's typical of microdocium okay. so at the moment it does look as though there's, there's a relatively high risk. What can you do in your foliar program to help? So the application of, of something like uh, proline at, at T1 as you can see now the, the trash is, is fairly well exposed mm -hmm. so that as you put in your T1 spray on the product is going to get down onto this trash and we think that helps in terms of reducing the inoculum. Okay. The, the spores come from the stem base and start to infect the leaf layers. So the application of something like um, prothiaconazole T2 would certainly have a, an effect on the microdocium. When you come to T2, should we be investing in new SDHIs on a, on a crop like this with levels of septoria in the bottom of, of that order? The SDHIs on the flag, that is the most responsive timing in a wheat crop. You know, in trials, you know, consistently a ton from a flag leaf spray. Mm -hmm. So if you're making an investment at any time, that's the timing to do it. And you have some of the added benefits where we know there are additional physiological benefits from these sprays. Mm -hmm. So that even in fairly low disease situations, the crop still responds to that investment. Okay. You know, a 10 ton crop, if Septoria could rob you of three tons, or you think you're getting a ton from a flag leaf spray, that's an easy sum to mm -hmm. do. But last year, where even we were down to half the yield just because of the weather, if you didn't make the fungicide investment, it was halved again. Yes. So you were still looking at, you know, a ton or so from mm -hmm. that investment. Well, we've been north, south, east and west, a huge range in the crops, a huge range in growth stages and a huge range in the amount of septoria there, but always there to some degree, so really important to keep on top of it for this season. Fusarium is present in all, all four sites, with microdocium particularly active at uh, in the northern site and, and in the east. Uh, we've also found an awful lot of Fusarium gramniarum on the crop debris, so that, that'll be ready and active to infect the crop at, at flowering.